Hello everyone, welcome back to Ask Nutritionist Deepa's uh, next episode. I hope you all are doing well and enjoying the summer, the hot weather, taking time to take care of yourself. Because remember, the more we take care of ourselves, the better we are in the position to take care of others, right? Because we cannot be like little microbiomes in our own little um, house here. We have to make sure that our friends, family, even our neighbor, we can't touch them, but you know, you don't have to touch someone to feel what they are going through. So it's all about being mindful and I hope you are, you are kind of in tune with that. And uh, I am back with another guest for you. And uh, today's episode is going to be all about help and uh, resiliency and tenacity and and plowing through things because i have mr kevin jackson here who is traveling all the way from chicago virtually <laughs> of course <laughs> and uh, kevin has a very interesting story and his his ups and downs in life has made him who he is and has made him uh, and has found a career of a social worker he finally was able to, to find uh, or to help others through, through that career. And uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Kevin Jackson here. And uh, so Kevin, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Deepa. I really appreciate being on your show and I'm very humbled by your invitation. All right, so Kevin, uh, we like to hear stories. We like to hear backgrounds. We like to know who, who the person, the real person behind the face is. So uh, give us your background, give us your life story as to who Kevin is and how you found Kevin within you. Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking me that. Uh, I'm the oldest of six children, uh, born to a single mother. Uh, I never met my father, never knew him, don't know what he looks like or anything like that. Um, and so I was raised in a working class household. Nobody uh, in my family had degrees or nobody was professionals like teachers, engineers, or police officers or anything like that. And so uh, for me, when I was nine years old, my mother married my stepfather who was a preacher. And um, he was a mean man, very mean, uh, very abusive, verbally, physically abusive. Uh, but he was a hardworking man he was a preacher and uh, uh, so I was raised in a religious household where, you know, either you were good or bad. You were sin or sinner. There weren't no in-between, weren't no gray areas. And uh, and if your life wasn't going right or something bad was happening in your life, God was punishing you because you were a sinner or you weren't doing what God wanted you to do. So mm -hmm. as I grew up in that life, uh, in that in that household, I had very low self-esteem, didn't know who I was, and I was an obedient did what my parents said. So when I went off to college, uh, I realized that I was the first person to go to college. So when I went to college, uh, there was no support. You know, once I was going to college, I was just on my own. And so I realized that what I was taught and what was going on in the real world didn't match. It didn't match up. And so I felt that it was my fault that I was doing something wrong because I, I didn't feel good about myself. I had low self-esteem. I had a lot of shame. I had a lot of guilt. Um, eventually I was able to graduate from college with a degree in business and marketing. Um, and then after I graduated from college in uh, Carbondale, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, I worked various jobs and I ended up working in this group home with boys who were wards okay. of the state. But I'm going to interrupt you here and ask yeah, you a question. Anytime. Yes. When you had such challenging childhood, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. did you even got to the point of graduating from high school and even get to the college level mm -hmm. and how did how did you find that strength was it your mom pushed you or you just wanted to get out of the situation because when you grow up uh, mm -hmm. or when you grew uh, uh, when you have like you said you had no really role model or mm -hmm. anybody around mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. How do you find that light? How do you even know that there is something better exists? Great question. Uh, very good question. Um, 
there was a couple of things that I knew. One, I knew that um, that college was going to be the way for me because I okay. saw it on TV. And also, I played football in a high school, so mm. football saved my life. So my friends on the football team was like, when well, we going to college, and I'm like, well, I'm going to college too. <laughs> Even though I didn't know what college was, I was like, okay. I'm going to go to college. And at that time, I truly believed in God and I believed in what my stepfather was preaching and we read the Bible. And one story that kind of resonated with me was Job. And I felt that, you know, Job went everything. And I felt that if I hold on, that it would be something better on the other side. Okay. Sort of like the, the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Yes. You know, I'm going to go to Wizard to get a brain. And I felt that if I could just graduate from high school, my life would be different. Okay. So I had, I saw it was hope in a sense. Hope. Perfect. And uh, yeah. to our audience, that's what we need to remember is in your darkest moment, yeah. when you are fallen, when mm -hmm. you are really at the bottom of the barrel, there is still one must somehow say that there is there is hope you know mm -hmm. because that hope will keep us alive the hope will help our brain think so so having hopeful or feeling hopeful is extremely important amazingly important hope is everything Hope is everything, like you said, uh, Deepo, especially when you're feeling low and you're feeling down, to yeah. continue to have that hope and that belief in yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, uh, no, please, so, any, <laughs> anytime, anytime. Just, okay. Because I can kind of yeah. talk a little bit, so anytime, no, just no, no, jump that's right good. in. <laughs> no, it's important because, you know, the kids are struggling right now. I, yes. I work in public health, and I'm seeing a lot of kids at younger age are struggling and they are feeling hopeless and frustrated. And that's why I want to make sure that as a parent and if, if there are any teenagers listening, uh, mm. hope is important, you know, yeah. and, and people like you are role models because you have yeah. done it. Yeah, it is. And, and the thing about it, I'm going to jump around a little bit there. That's but fine. When I went to graduate school to become a social worker, because like I said, I, I was raised in a religious household, so mm. it was either this or that, black and white, no gray area. So when I went into social work and I started learning about human behavior, human uh, psychology, human development, mm. and they started te teaching me about um, mental illness. Mm. And I remember that we were going over the symptoms of depression. I'm like, oh my God, that's me. I'm all these years, I was depressed. Yes. But I never knew. I never knew about depression or anxiety and those different things and birth order and the climate and culture in your home, how these things do have an effect on your decisions as an adult and what route and things that you go about. So just knowing that was like, it was amazing to me. It was like knowledge that I had never ex experienced before seeing. Wow. That mm -hmm. is... That is really amazing uh, yeah. that, you know, how we sometimes tend to go through life. And like I see with my patients who are very, very sick, the mm -hmm. sickness is becomes, the symptoms become almost normal. Yep. You know, low mm -hmm. energy or feeling yeah. depressed, you can say, or sad or hopeless mm -hmm. or in pain or mm -hmm. high blood sugars or headaches. Yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. becomes like, oh, this is just a new normal, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. as human beings very quickly get used accept to it. Accept it. Yeah, accept it. Yeah. Accept it. I mean, look how far we feel mentally since mm -hmm. March. In March, we thought, yeah. oh my God, the world is ending. And now <laughs> we are like, oh, this Zoom business is not as bad as I thought. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, uh, but anyway, so then what happened? So, so then, um, so after I kind of fell into social work, I really wanted to work in the school systems because mm -hmm. like you said, with kids and parents, um, I'm seeing the kids in the same situation that I was in and parents trying to deal with that. And what I realized is that a lot of it is just lack of information, just mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And when kids come into my office, I talk to them about depression and I talk mm -hmm. to them the things that can cause depression. I, there's some that's medical, that's chemical and, and chemistry, I do it, but a lot of it has to do with trauma. And you hit on it very well that 
when you raised in trauma, that's all you know. So you don't see it as trauma. So you just see it as something normal, but it does have an effect on you emotionally and in and, and your belief in yourself and the hope. So when parents and, and students come and talk to me, I talk to them about depression. I talk to mm -hmm. them about the signs and symptoms of depression. Mm -hmm. Then I talk to them about certain um, skills and strategies they can use to kind of pull themselves out. And also in this situation, I realize it's, it depends on how you look at things. Mm -hmm. If you look at things from, an, like when I was coming up, like I was saying earlier, I looked at, I was being punished. That the universe was punished me, I'm cursed, I would never get out of this situation. But mm -hmm. as I evolved as a person, I realized that I wasn't being punished, I was being prepared. Interesting. So if you look at, so you can look at 2020 as all these things as, you know, horrible, negative, and toxic, or you can look at it in a sense as you being prepared and mm -hmm. use it as a way to grow and develop yourself in a sense. And one um, Zoom I was on is that uh, like with couples, mm -hmm. they've never been at home for a long period of time with themselves. So they end up realizing that they have a lot of issues and a lot of fights and they've been fighting and arguing for a long time. But yeah. by them being at home, even with the children and their parents, by them being home, they forced to deal with some issues that they had with each other. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we have so, f we were so far removed from, <laughs> from what real life should be. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That this, this has been a really good reset. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. You know, I mean. I agree. No, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that it is, it is bad and, a lot of people are hurting right now but mm -hmm. like you said if we use this as a stepping stone for something yeah um, it, it truly is and, and one of the skills that i use with my kids and even with parents is something simple like walking mm -hmm. one of the big questions i get from parents all the time is my teenager won't talk to me how do i get my kids to talk to me and i tell parents all the time i said if you set a teenager down they're like hey What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm okay. Nothing. You know, yeah. you're not going to get an answer. But teenagers' brains are developing and kind of different and they're very active. So I tell parents all the time, look, just you and your teenager go for a walk. Yeah. That's, just go for And talk about anything. Don't talk about anything. Just talk about movies or sports or anything like that. Walk 10 minutes away from your house. Turn around and walk back. That's a 20-minute walk. And mm -hmm. I said, once you build a routine, Teenagers tend to let their guards down and they tend to tell you how they feel. But it has to be some type of activity and build the momentum. And it's also in the skill because walking outside of the, uh, the physical goodness of walking, mm -hmm. but it also helps relieve stress. It helps yeah. relax your mind. It helps relax your joint. And it's exercise and you're burning calories, but you're also building the skill of communicating and talking, which yeah. definitely helps as you're walking as well. So that was one of the kind of the skills that I kind of use with parent and teenagers as well. Perfect. Perfect. No, simple, such a simple thing, but we never mm -hmm. think of walking as a therapy session. You yes. know, uh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> really it is. Um, yes, it is. So you were in college and then you yeah. finished your graduate school. Now, mm -hmm. during this time, I'm assuming life wasn't exactly bed of roses for you. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> like you know, you, you like when you go see the Wizard of Oz and you think your yeah. life's gonna change. I, I was like, I graduated from college. I got a, a, a degree in business and marketing and management. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm ready to make money, get my own place, go out in the world and do different things. It didn't happen that way. I ended up moving back with my mom, and we were poor, of course. Hmm. And uh, I couldn't find a job. I was sending hmm. out resumes left and right, and nobody would hmm. hire me. I couldn't find a job. And then I ended up working like temp jobs. Hmm. I ended up working temp jobs here and there, seasonal jobs. Hmm. And just to make some money, I just wanted to make some money. And so, hmm. um, and then um, I ended up uh, working at this agency called CETA. And what mm. they did was they gave you um, assistance on your light, your gas, your heat, and your rent during the winter time. So mm. I just verify application. And I and, and what's so funny, 
is that I love the job because all I did was put on my headphones and I did application. Hmm. And the, uh, the, the, the guy that was in charge was an Indian guy from hmm. India. And I didn't even think he knew me. His name was Sam Chaco. I didn't think he hmm. knew me. And one day he called me in his office. Hmm. And I was sitting there talking with him, but I was like, man, I want to get back to work so I can get my numbers up. You know, you yeah. talking, you, you're not talking about anything. I want to hear it. And then finally he stopped and he looked at me hmm. and he said, Kevin, you don't belong here. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you don't belong here. He was like, you too smart. You too good for this place. This is hmm. beneath you. Hmm. He said, the other people here belong here. He said, but you don't. He said, you need to leave and mm. you need to go out into that world and find yourself. Mm. And that was our first ever interaction with each other outside of saying hi. And it kind of puzzled me and kind of confused me because I honestly, I did not know what he was talking about at all. And probably so, nobody ever said that to you. Never, never, ever, ever, ever said that to me. And so it blew me off because, you know, because he was always walking back and forth. And I was thinking, how could you see that in me when I'm just sitting at a desk doing applications, you know? Yeah. So it, it kind of threw me off. So then I got laid off from that job. And then I ended up working at a group home okay. with boys. Hmm. And, um, and I hated it because these boys were just off the chain. You know, we had to restrain them and all this, this sort of stuff. And so when I started reading their files, and I read the files of them being sexually abused, being mm -hmm. shot at, verbally abused, and that's why they was taken from their moms and their families didn't want them back. And I then it became the best job I ever had in my life, Deborah. It was, I love that job. Then mm -hmm. a friend said to me, you're not gonna make any money in social work without a master's degree. She said, you got to go back to school. Uh. And said, that's what took me back to school to get my master's degree. And, and, and then while I was in graduate school, I ended up working at a, a recovery place for people who was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm. And that further helped me to kind of understand how people turn to alcohol and drugs to deal with some trauma that happened in their life because they don't have any skills or help or, mm. or self-care skills on how to deal with a lot of issues in their life. So they turn to drugs and alcohol. Hmm. So that gave me another understanding of people that life isn't just black and white. There's hmm. a lot of great areas. And if you don't have some information or if you don't have somebody that's positive by your side, you can't get lost. You really can't get lost and lose hope like you were talking about yeah. before and then go into a depression. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it it's... Probably for you, you it probably feels oh, this was so long ago, but <laughs> right. But yeah, where we are right now in in this 2020 June and mm -hmm. what has happened last um, few weeks, few months about everything about uh, conversation around race and this COVID mm -hmm. and the facts that came to surface about you know which demographic uh, mm -hmm. was most affected by COVID, infection rate, access to care, everything, mm -hmm. right? A lot of things came to surface. There are still hundreds of youths, boys mm -hmm. and girls who are going through what you are going through even right mm -hmm. now as we speak. Mm -hmm. So, if the if there is a person who is really uh, suffering right now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what what advice would would and if he knocks uh, on your door or for some reason if you end up seeing him on the street or whatever, yeah. um, you know how that that your employer, the Indian person mm -hmm. you mentioned, was your. No, God or angel or whatever mm. you can say. If you, if you were to have an opportunity to talk to somebody like that, and I'm sure being mm. a social worker, you get plenty mm -hmm. of sessions. Yeah. What is one thing that you will tell someone to just kind of help them? Uh, uh, get great question. 
<laughs> Great. I'm going to try to keep it to one thing if I can. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I guess for me, I guess one of the, the most important thing is that I would tell people that they have to cut negative people out their lives. Nice. They have to cut and the toxic people in their life. And, and I know it's hard for people, but I don't care if it's mother, father, children, aunts, uncles, brothers, co-workers. You have to get negative people out of your life because they're poisoning you. And they poison your thought process and make you feel like you're not worthy. And mm -hmm. that it would be imperative that you surround yourself with positive people. That would be, that would be the, if anything, that would be the most important thing because I have positive people in my life and friends and right. they're the ones who support me and carry me and we do it for each other because sometimes, you know, you have different moments in your life where one may be high, one may be low. Yeah. And I'm not saying a girlfriend or a boyfriend or husband or wife, but mm -hmm. just true friends mm -hmm. that are positive and that's uplifting and that can kind of help you through what you're going through. Okay, so I'm, that's, that's great. I mean, the, the power of having positive people or thoughts around mm -hmm. you is, is tremendous. But I'm going to make the situation even more tricky for you uh, okay. to solve. Let's say yes. uh, this person is, is stuck in the sense, you know how, especially, I'm mm -hmm. talking spe specifically about teenagers, where okay. he just feels trapped. I mean, you know, even though he's been bullied, doesn't have strength or doesn't know uh, where to go or you know somehow the, the, the he he starts to feel it is what it is i'm going to and get losing yeah, and yeah losing. exactly yeah. so mm -hmm. how do how do we get teenagers to kind of mm, separate themselves away from mm, from their peers who may be into drugs or gun violence mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because sometimes they are just doing it not because they want to do yeah. it, but yeah. they are trapped. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Um, when I'm in high school and I, I get a lot of teenagers like that, yeah. I get a lot of teenagers like that. And what I tell parents is this, and this is what saved my life, football saved my life, is that yes. you got to put them in an activity. Okay. You've got to put them in activity. And I know it may be hard financially doing the, hmm. the, the coronavirus, hmm. but putting them in an activity helps put them around positive people and it helps with their self-esteem. So, hmm. and I don't mean it has to be football or sports or anything like that. If you know your teenager, you know if they have a feel for art or they have a feel for music or dance or hmm. uh, cooking hmm. uh, where they can go at least once or twice a week to a class, and then that's something that they can help them deal with their self-esteem, and it helps them to feel good about themselves, and then they're around like people who have the same positive mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, during the coronavirus, that can may, may be hard, um, and I know finances can be whatever, but I think that it would be important that as a parent, if you can find uh, a mentor, somebody a little bit older. Yeah. So like if you have a teenager to find somebody that may be in college or they're a freshman, find a senior, it doesn't matter. And they can be kind of like a mentor to that person mm -hmm. and then kind of do activities on Zoom with that person as yeah. far as read a book together and recommend yeah. a book and they can sit on Zoom and read a book together. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be an hour or two hours. It can just be 20 minutes or half an hour. So that way that person can, can connect with somebody and kind of work from there. Perfect. Because you do need that, uh, you need that oxygen almost to yeah. help you get through. Uh, talking about books, I believe you wrote a book. Yes, I wrote my autobiography and, and thank you. Uh, I, I'm a horrible self-promoter. I'm horrible, so I don't self-promote <laughs> No, please myself. don't. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> right. So I wrote my autobiography, and, and, and what's, what's really important is that my autobiography was my therapy because mm -hmm. I couldn't understand why I was making the same mistakes. I couldn't understand uh, why I was in the same relationships and the relationship would end. And mm -hmm. then when I wrote my autobiography, and I remember I started from when I was four or five years old all the way up until that point, 
then seeing the different patterns, it mm. hit me and it helped me to understand that a lot of stuff that I learned, I learned from my parents mm. and I learned from my grandparents because mm. it's sort of like, like learn behavior. Mm. You know, this is what you know. And I didn't know that I was doing this sort of like on a subconscious level. Sure. And so writing that book helped turn my life around. And one of the things, one, if they don't know, learn anything from me or hear anything from me, this is what I want to tell them is this is mm. that, what I learned is that in order for me to gain control, I had to lose control. Meaning that I spent my whole life trying to control other people, trying to control my mother, you know, begging her to do this or begging my girlfriend to stay or not to cheat on me or begging my brothers and sisters to go to school. And what I was doing was that by me not being able to control them, I was losing control of myself because I was so much into them. So what I had to learn to realize is this, is that I had to learn to let go hmm. and control what I can control. I can only control myself. I can't control anything else. And that was a process for me. So after I wrote my book and I understood it, so what I would do is I would take index cards and hmm. I would put it on my, I, would, I put the word let go on the index cards. I put it in my mirror. I put it on my front door when I walked out and I put it on the wall when I walked in on my front door because mm -hmm. it's a process of letting go. It's like, mm -hmm. let go, control what you can control. And so in doing that, that helped me to focus on my self-care. Mm -hmm. That helped me to focus on myself. And then once I started getting to know myself, then it kind of helped motivate me to do different things of self-caring about myself and not worrying about my siblings or my nephews or anybody like that, I worried about myself. And so that was part of it is, that's the first thing I had to learn to do was to let go. Wow. What's the name of your uh, biography? Oh, it's uh, My Journey to Kevin James Jackson. Okay, so that's how you found- uh, That's how I found Kevin James You found James Jackson. Kevin within you. I by, found it within by, you. by learning to letting go. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 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 what's so funny about that? I know I, I refer to the Wizard of Oz all the time, but I I was the um, it was the black version, the Wiz with Diana Ross and Michael Jackson, and she says something very profound in that movie. She says mm -hmm. that um, she was talking to the Wiz, and she says the Lion, the Scarecrow, and Tin Man head inside of them what they were looking for all along. Yeah, and then she looked at him and said, "I don't know what's inside of you." but I know you can't find it in these four walls. Mm. So I had, and I, what the guy had seen in me, he mm. saw it in me and I didn't see it in myself, Good. but it was in me all along. And when I learned to let go and control what I can control, then that definitely helped me to find myself. That I think um, is such a profound teaching yes. moment. <laughs> For, for us right now is uh, going back to COVID and whatever, what everything that has happened is if we somehow start letting go and dwelling mm -hmm. over that and really, really look at it, how, no matter how horrible the situation is for quite a few people out there with their jobs and you know mm -hmm. relationship and parents and life is complicated. There's it is. so much happening, but I think if we take your advice of letting go mm -hmm. and and start focusing on what mm -hmm. we can do, mm -hmm. uh, because I know that there are resources out there in oh, yeah. the community, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. there is hope, but I guess we get so stuck or fixated upon our problems and mm -hmm. you know how everything how uh, mm -hmm. everybody is responsible for, yeah. for certain situations that we we are not finding an enough energy to look for things for ourselves yes. so so kevin that letting go um yes. uh, the uh, oh, postcard, x cards x card yeah. Is, yeah. is a great idea yeah because what i learned uh, especially being an education field up is that mm -hmm. we learn with all our senses I mm. used to think that I only learned with my eyes, but mm. you learn with your hearing, your eyes, your smell, your taste, and how you feel. Mm. And so when you learn, and then like when you put it 
when you see it and you say it, then you hear it. Then eventually mm. you'll begin to feel it. Yes. Let go, let go. So now you, so that's the whole part of it. And mm. like with my children, I got twins. Mm. And what I do, um, and like I said, I was raised and, you know, if, if you read the book, nobody never told me they loved me. Ever. <laughs> ever in my life coming up from a kid nobody ever said I love and I didn't think that was important but it is important so mm -hmm. when I see my kids is that I always hug them mm -hmm. and I let them see it in my face I let them see it in my feel I let them hear it in my voice because you're learning with all your senses so they know that I love them and I mm -hmm. think that's important is that you got to love yourself and I don't okay. it can be let go or it could be love yourself or yeah. whatever message you want to give yourself i think it's important that something small like that would definitely help you absolutely so, um what a what a great uh, story that you have you know to from where you started and mm -hmm. and some real stuff you yeah. know uh, you, you are uh, you know growing up in a such a strict family yeah. and yeah. religious family um mm -hmm. You are a uh, man of color. That adds mm -hmm. another layer yeah. of issues on top of mm -hmm. everything. Right. And, uh, you know, and from there to be in the position of a social worker, helping kids in schools. Yes, yes. That must yes. be very rewarding for you. It is. It's extremely rewarding, especially when they reach out to me on Facebook mm -hmm. and they thank me for, you know, all the help and 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 the one thing that I say is that for loving me, for yes. loving me, and I would tell them all the time that I do love you and that I'm trying, you know, and everything yes. that I'm giving you is to help you, you and to benefit you, not to tear Absolutely. you down or destroy you. So yes. that that is just a great thing. It really is. It's a great feeling, and a lot of them were in my situation, so I'm trying to get them information that I didn't have. Yes. So it, hopefully they won't go through so many hurdles and obstacles that I did when I was young and hopefully make life a little bit easier for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so do you have any social media or any contact or anything that you that you want to share uh, with, yeah. uh, with <laughs> yeah. the audience if anybody wants to reach out to you? Yeah, uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, okay. My Facebook name is Kevin James Jackson. Okay. So if you send me a, a friend request i would definitely accept your friend request sure. uh, if you want to reach out to me through messaging i don't want to put my a telephone number out there sure. but sure. uh but if they want to call or email me i can send yeah. you my information yeah, please do. and and, yeah. and if they want to reach out and talk to me i'll be more than happy to do that as well um because i think that we all have to do it together Absolutely. and i think we need truly need to depend on each other i love your platform thank yeah. you I think, honestly, I think this is a great platform because people need this. And people Absolutely. need to understand they're not in it alone. There are so many different people that's yes. going through the same thing. And I may have some resources for you that you may not have, or you may have some for me. So Absolutely. this is so important. So thank you for starting this and thank you for having this. That's true. No, th really, thank you. I'm, I'm glad our uh, paths crossed somehow yeah, yeah. because because I feel that uh, there's so many of us in the community with mm -hmm. some skill or yeah. something that we can help each other and people feel, oh my God, you have to be a celebrity to make impact. And I mm. feel, no, I... each one of us, you yes. know, uh, can, can help in some way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may be just smiling or just waving at yes. your neighbor, you know, something, that tiny, that minute can have um, a profound effect. And, mm -hmm. and just like that, your employer, you know, that one sentence yeah. changed your life. So who knows, your smile, your wave, yeah. your, your um, just hello may mm -hmm. pull somebody out of the black hole and mm -hmm. really will help them will give them hope in humanity and uh, oh, yes. and to move forward. So thank you for mm -hmm. coming on the oh, show. Anytime you, anytime you want me, I'm more than happy to be on your show or, or anything, whatever you need. I'm, sure. I'm definitely sure. available. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again, hopefully in person, maybe in Chicago. Yeah.
soon. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, so everybody, we had a phenomenal episode with Kevin um, Jackson today. And those of you, any of you, maybe you, you, your family, or anybody in your close circle needs any help, you know, some sort of a mentorship, advice, please reach out, okay? Um, unless sometime we don't, if it's, it's as simple as don't ask, don't get, right? Mm -hmm. So please uh, get out, ask for help. We are here to help. If we don't, if we can't help, or if we don't have resources, we'll find something for you. So please, 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 please reach out for help. You are not alone. And uh, thank you again for joining us. And we will uh, see you next time. Again, I do Facebook live cooking demos every Thursday and once in a while on Sunday. So stay tuned with the announcement on our Facebook page, Nutrition is Deepa. And you can watch this podcast episode on YouTube. So make sure you share and review and do your thing. Okay. Until then, stay well, stay healthy, stay happy. <laughs>